Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I have an opportunity today to work on a reel that Leo sent in. This is a Fluger Akron reel, and uh, Akron was the uh, Akron, Ohio, the home of Fluger reels. And uh, overall, it's running pretty good. It's missing a uh, spool adjuster cap, which I'm, uh, I was able to get. But uh, we'll show you how to take this apart, how to service it, and, um, well, how to keep it running for a long time to come. So there's a couple of things you want to know about these reels. They are direct drive reels. There are no drag uh, stars or otherwise. They backpedal, so that's oftentimes called a, um, a knuckle buster. And uh, overall, they're very well made. They have a German silvering on the uh, uh, as a coat for them. They're a nice level one reel, and these things can fish on and on and on. So uh, let's get started. We'll get started first by uh, encouraging you to subscribe to my channel. If you like the art of reel repair, if you like to see how reels are serviced and how to keep them uh, fishing and maybe how to restore them and give them a second chance, well, that's what it's all about. And uh, my channel is really designed to teach you how to service your own reels so that you can do just that. So uh, every now and then people shy away from it and uh, don't want to do it themselves. That's okay too. That's kind of what I do as well. I repair and service fishing reels. but. I really want to transfer what knowledge I have to uh, show you how to do it so that uh, long after I stop repairing reels, well, the reels can get serviced and moved on. All right, there's a mechanism here, a level wind mechanism. It includes the worm drive. You just saw me take two small screws out of this side. There's two more small screws on that side. And, and what that enables you to do is to service this reel it's line guide without taking the whole reel apart. Of course, we're going to take the whole reel apart uh, just to make sure that everything's clean and lubricated and all the things are what they are. Well, these reels were the rage before World War II introduced a whole new series of reels called spinning reels. But uh, before then, you didn't have them for freshwater fishing. And the, um, what you did have were these. They were line guide reels. They were made the start of the century, uh, the, the 20th century, 1900. Uh, William Sh Shakespeare and Company came up with a design of a fishing reel. Ernest Fluger was a competitor to Shakespeare, and uh, now they're both owned by the same company, Pure Fishing. Well, back in the day, that wasn't the case. They competed against each other. They had kind of comparable designs, and uh, just both of them were very well-made reels at the time. All right, well, you see that I'm just kind of moving some pieces and parts about here. I want to get all these pieces out. I want to make sure that we get inside the cavity and clean here. And that's what's nice about this. We haven't opened up the drive, but if you had taken the real fishing and, and there was some performance issues in the worm gear and the like, well, this is the best way to do it. Just take it off. Well, the pole is working. I'm simply going to put some oil onto the worm drive. A little shot of oil inside here. Uh, there is a screw, a very small screw here. If you need to access the pole, you could. I'm just going to work that in, make sure it's all clean, which it is. And then we can just simply put it all back together again and set it off to the side. So we're going to take the line guide mechanism. We're going to insert through the one side of the frame, bring it over, turn it up. Oh, just notice as I'm turning it up, there's a little bit of dirt there. So let's get that dirt off. And generally speaking, if you send your reel out for service and you find out that this line guide is dirty, well, you question the service in terms of just what did they do or not do there. So a little bit of dirt inside here, so let's just get that out while we can as well. All right, that's this side of the reel. Flip it up, move it over and seat it. You have the uh, nylon gear that's going to sit on the square of that. Make sure that it is seated properly or it won't drive the reel. There we go. And then we have a half cap here. And we'll just put that off to the side now. We can put some grease into that little shoulder on that cap there. That's your line guide service. So if you're having a line guide issue, you don't have to take the whole reel apart. You can access it just like we did. And uh, 
that'll do you well there. All right, I'm going to just put that into the basket with my other small screws and my handle that I removed. I use the bottom of a fast food container as a parts tray. I do encourage you to use parts trays to keep track of your pieces. And uh, of course, it's not mandatory. If you have another way you like to keep track of your pieces, uh, go right ahead. A lot of folks um, kind of like the idea of uh, taking apart the real piece by piece and then laying them out on a, a towel or some kind of uh, mat or something up in front of them. Kind of first, first off goes, starts the chain and then all of the pieces after that uh, follow in a sequential order so that you know when you reverse the process for that fishing reel that you, uh, well, you go put it back together piece by piece the same way. That should release the case now. You'll notice that we have the case, the spool, then we have the bridge, and under the bridge we have the main gear. So it's a rather simple design. This Okay, we're just going to take those pieces and parts, clean them up. We can get to places where uh, Leo wasn't able to get because we have the reel completely disassembled. So a quick squirt. We use a fishing rod and reel cleaner. I use pen precision uh, rod and reel cleaner here. It just takes off that film and other things that kind of accumulate on a reel over time. I find it's good. It's kind of a cleaner and a wax all in one or polish or whatever it may be. It's good on the rods as well. Well, you'll see on the end that we just cleaned over there, there's a, um, a little bit of a um, jewel cap. And that's what's missing from the other side of this reel. So I was able to uh, locate one and uh, we'll be able to make sure that that gets installed to provide the proper spool tensioning on this reel. We're going to use our reel grease. Just put a little bit into the hole where that spool goes. We'll use the same cleaner on the spool. There's a little bit of film on there. I believe this is an aluminum spool. It feels that way. And while there is a removable gear here, there is no uh, free spool release. So that just simply sits on the main post. Put a little bit of grease behind it. Lock that in place. Put a little bit of grease on it. And then we can take that assembly and we can put that into the base of the reel. Just like that. All right, this is the jewel cap I was able to locate. Again, it's got that nice little uh, plastic insert, or I'm not quite sure what that is, but that belongs here on the outside of that case. Before I do that, let's clean this case up. We have that uh, kitchen scrubby that holds the uh, cleaner on it. it. Also enables you to kind of move around quite a bit. And then when you get to a little tight area, go ahead and use like a cotton swab, which I'm doing here, to uh, complete that cleaning. There we go. Nice and shiny now. Beautiful uh, work done on these cases. These are engraved. These are treasures. All right, and then let's make sure that this little jewel cap fits here. Should as advertised. Yep, there you go. It's all screwed in. When you do that, it's pretty hard not to do that by hand, but please do it by hand when you do that because you don't want to cross strip any of these pieces. All right, the inside of this is clean. Here's our bridge post. We want to clean that. And as you can see, there's a relative simplicity, but that doesn't mean it's a, uh, a cheap or a bad or an, an, any kind of uh, superlative you want to use. Real. It's quite the, quite different in that regard. It's very well made. Quality components and there's a reason why this reel is still around today. So I mentioned that uh, the, the landscape for freshwater fishing reels really did change uh, when uh, World War II ended and folks came back having seen spinning reels in Europe uh, and they were hungry to get them. Well, these bait casters lasted into the mid-50s 
and then gradually the spinning wheel just became so convenient. And then of course today's version of this is the low profile bait caster. So they were around, they can still fish, they can still catch a lot of fish. Just uh, don't think that because of the age and the technology that something's amiss with them. It really isn't. Okay, we've got our bridge part. We're just going to load that in. Going to line that up and we're going to bring that over and install that onto the faceplate of the reel. To line the holes. It takes a little while. We can actually put that bridge plate in and do the alignment without uh, the case on first. Then we can grab that case. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. Nice little snap tells us that that's in the way it should be in. Now my three case screws and I've kind of violated some of my policy right there. I generally do not like to leave them on a bench. Uh, let's call that absent-mindedness. I should not have done that. I would like to put that into my parts tray, and I'm fortunate that I didn't knock them over and out. All right. Since there's only three of them, there's no real right or wrong way to put that in. So just uh, pick your spot and start there. All three screws are the same. I, that's why I laid them on my bench. I wanted to make sure that they were all the same. And once I did that, I usually transfer them into my case, but uh, well, today wasn't the time to do that I guess. All right so if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you want to know a little bit about the history of a reel, maybe you want to learn that Ernest Fluger who founded Fluger had four sons and they actually founded a sub-brand under Fluger called Four Brothers and uh, they continued the uh, reel company until interestingly enough they sold it to Shakespeare. So. Uh, one of the things you can learn, you're going to learn a lot of things about fishing reels. Some of it is just nice, fun to know kind of stuff. And some stuff, well, maybe it's uh, going to help you out in a reel repair somewhere. One of the things you interesting to note is that everybody knows the Fluger President today, but President was a brand of Shakespeare prior to the acquisition of Fluger. And then Shakespeare started marketing their uh, brand, the, the President. Uh, model under Fluger. So go figure. All right we're just lining up the holes here. You want to make sure that this line guide goes into the slot in that crossbar before you lock everything down. And then once you have them aligned, I have the one side aligned, I have the going to work a little bit on the other. The other one is just uh, kind of caught up here. I'm just going to try and see if I can't move that plate a little bit. And use a pick to do that. There we go. Now we're lined up. Okay, there you go. That's how you put the line guide back in. Now we're going to go ahead and get those line guide screws. For those, I just go to my basket. These are very small screws. I one of the recommendations a lot of times with small screws like this is work over a cardboard box or something. Because if you drop the screw, it doesn't bounce other, any place other than the cardboard box. Well, I've spent enough time looking on the floor for these screws to pass that along to you. They do bounce. The four screws are the same, so it doesn't matter if they go on the left side or the right side. But again, you would want to note that as you're removing these. This little guy doesn't want to go in. There we go. Fortunately for me, and small screws, this one is a, a little bit of indentation that will allow me to put them in pretty easily. This side's going to be a little bit more difficult. I use this pick an awful lot. It's just a, a dollar store pick. But it helps me to center holes and to uh, align pieces and so on, in addition to cleaning in that. Well, we've mostly used grease on this reel with the exception of oiling the uh, line, line drive, the worm gear. There's really nothing that's moving 
that says you need to uh, oil. We put the greases into the cavities for the spool. And you do that because grass, grease is going to outlast oil. So if you have a place where there's going to be friction, uh, generally speaking, you want to uh, use the greases. They don't evaporate as quickly and they, uh, they will uh, last longer so you don't have to do the maintenance quite as much. All right, we're down to the end cap here. The end cap, uh, it's got a screw and it's also got a flange for a wrench. And let's uh, take a look. Remember what we heard when we, we did this initially? It was all kinds of noisy. Look how nice and quiet that is now. If you want, there's a little bit of play there. You can tighten that spool tensioner. Beautiful reel. Absolutely beautiful reel. So, that's it. That's your Fluger Akron. Named after the town where Fluger was headquartered in Ohio. Shakespeare was up in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, I'm just putting a little bit of oil and working to get into those handle knobs. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To uh, all of our first responders, and that, I certainly appreciate your efforts. To everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. Listening for the click. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.